I ran into Jenny Slate. I sort of gushed over Catherine. <laughs> and I think I weirded her out. You, know? <laughs> you start crying and perspiring <laughs> yeah. at the same time. It's not like the thing that she's known for. But, <laughs> yeah. but, it's know. like if I had you on my show and I asked you about uh, Mega Galactica. What's that? <laughs> That's a show you're in where you're a bulgy eyed alien and you have like foot sex with somebody. Oh! Welcome back, Video Rangers, to another episode of Nothing New, the show where we meet travelers from antique lands. Tonight, today, this morning, we're going to meet Mitch McGee, uh, actor, director, producer, singer-songwriter, dancer, lover. Mitch, <laughs> you're a septuple threat. I'm, I'm working on the ECOT. What's it like being that threatening? Or what's the most threatening you think you've ever been? I don't think I've ever been threatening. <laughs> that, that, you know, I'm a non-threatening guy. Nowadays, you're living now in L.A., but uh, you originally hailed from a... Uh, uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts. Is that correct? That's right. How did you know that? I, I've read all of your tweets. Oh! Uh, do you know uh, the Gravity Hill? Oh, yeah. I know the Gravity Hill. Yep, I do. I guess the only other notable thing I wrote about Greenfield, Massachusetts was it's also where Penn Jillette is from. I met Penn Jillette one. I was doing something with College Humor. He came with these, like, two bodyguard-looking guys. <laughs> like built and like all in black and like military men they didn't speak well then who spoke oh you're thinking of teller i got them backwards yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. the first guest i had on the show was dan lucal who i'm not even sure if you may remember you had a very brief appearance in one of his videos he's a good guy that was a funny video that video fits in well with a, a career you've kind of made of showing up in other people's videos uh as a doctor and scissor cop yeah when there's fake facial hair it's always hard if it's it's just a, a low budget thing because you're always worried about it falling off, I think. You were also a guy at a table in Fright Bright. I vaguely remember that. On the subway in Pursuits of Sexiness. Yeah, I think I directed that episode. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering, because you don't say anything. I was, I'd been wondering if you had just been on the subway car and they're like, oh, it's that guy. Somewhat recently, uh, a movie you had a bit part in was Greener Grass by uh, Jocelyn Dubor. And Don Luby, too. They were they sort of co-created it. Okay, great. You've worked with uh, Jocelyn a few times before, mm -hmm. and this movie seemed like this kind of natural amalgamation of a lot of things that you've been involved in. Yeah, we're, I, it's funny. I, I don't know how it, it kind of came about. I met Jocelyn through UCB in New York. Upright Citizens Brigade? Right, exactly. Yeah. And um, I had cast her in a couple of things that I had done before. And then when you meet someone like Jocelyn, she comes across as very sort of upbeat and happy and this very sweet person, but then everything she does is about kind of cruelty <laughs> and, and, and malice. And... Also kind of uh, a progression from Thank You Cabbage. I'm happy now. No, you're not. Yeah, that's interesting uh, about trying to kind of assemble a personality that's presentable for people. There's a few people in Greener Grass that have kind of cropped up a few times throughout your career, like uh, Neil Casey and, and Will Hine. Yeah. Uh, when did yeah. you first uh, meet them? Right when UCD was starting up, people started to just, you know, who were interested in comedy and performance, said you have to check out these shows that are going on. I want to write a serious drama, a drama that will change the entire world. It seemed like a kind of underground scene, and now it's this major institution. You had a, uh, uh, a team that you put together with a name that I hear that uh, you were uh, responsible for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, so, uh, yeah, the team, the name of the, the, imp the improv team was Monkey Dick. And I actually didn't want it as a team name. I think I read somewhere that it was kind of a punishment because you guys couldn't agree on a team name something like that we had people on that team that like complained and said i can't even tell my parents what i'm doing it reminds me of like a <laughs> pub trivia name or something you would sort of flyer for any shows that you had you yeah. know ask people to come to a comedy show which was sort of i don't think ever brought anyone to a comedy show <laughs> yeah. so, you know. actually the last person i had on the show um uh mentioned i believe firmly that if you invite me to your improv show you hate me <laughs> how many bad improv shows do you think you've sat through oh lots and lots and lots and lots and lots right. i've been in them I, yeah. I've, 
I, I've been, the, I've been the, the cause of that interruption. <laughs> There's this thing, New York Channel 101. That they called Channel 102 back then. Oh, know. did they? Can you describe what uh, that is? It's a video competition for five minute tele television shows. A creator would make what they call a pilot and they would screen these pilots. And if the and the audience would vote on which ones they liked the best, whichever ones made it through would have to make the next episode of their series. The improv community knew about it, and a lot of people in that community were sort of participating in that. You can really open up your mouth real wide. Yeah. <laughs> Before then, had you had been in a, a few videos, I think. A few videos, but I mean, it was very crude and. I mean, it was always very crude. I think an early one I saw was like about like cufflink salesmen. I love the research that you've done. It's very thorough. A lot of these videos <laughs> are in Flash Player, which doesn't even like exist anymore. I had to like download all these really sketchy programs onto a computer. I'll probably have to wipe the computer afterwards. I love, I love pretending that these kind of small little things, because uh, in my mind, they're big deals. It, you know, it's like kind of a snowball effect. You start to kind of see things that, um, become a bigger thing later on. That was a kind of a cultural moment, like videos on the internet. I remember when the first person to tell me what YouTube was, you know, <laughs> like I remember that moment. The first thing that you posted on YouTube, or at least the first thing that's still accessible is Dark Hard Man. We just bummed around Brooklyn, confronting people on the street, me dressed as a superhero. That video got on the front page of YouTube. <laughs> really? That's... Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. But it wasn't even that many views, but it was something like 300,000 views. And yeah. I was like, holy shit, you know? Uh... <laughs> yeah, and so out of channel 101 or 102, whatever you want to say, uh, right. came a few of your, your better known internet uh, videos. Well, I had done this series, Sexual Intercourse American Style, and it was hard, you know, it was <laughs> four main leads and a lot of different locations. And so I was talking to my friend Dinah. Yeah, I wish I had somebody to punch instead of eating this candy bar. One of us said, well, why don't we do something in one location? It's just a guy in, in, a, in his little room and we'll, have him just sitting at a desk and that will be the show. So let's see what I've found inside my study drawers. Snails. Yeah, no one liked it. It <laughs> taught me this kind of hunger for narrative. What people wanted from that series was story. Uh, yeah. that, and I wasn't giving it to them. You, know? you you get a little bit of this background story. Yeah, like I, in my mind, I know what that guy is about. He's <laughs> yeah. seen things, he's been, he's been through some trauma, but it's only hint of that. There was a Philip Johnson building that was being built sort of posthumously that he had designed. And I said, oh, look at that building going up. That was designed by that guy, you know, uh, Mr. Glasses. I was just, like referring <laughs> yeah. to Phil Johnson. I was the toast of New York in Europe. But when modernism lost favor, I lost my clients. So I decided to start over, this time with some new friends, Kitty, Hardhat, and Sean. My name is Mr. Glasses. Later on, you were making Mr. Glasses episodes, and they were harder to produce. They had a, a cast. You had Ellie Kemper in it, uh, yeah. who was starting to get her career off Take the off. ground. Yeah. And yeah. so you twice uh, used Mr. Glasses as a vessel to show more episodes of Welcome to My Study. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we would do little Mr. Glasses bookends. Please enjoy a new episode of Welcome to My Study. They wanted Mr. Glasses enough that they voted to continue the show. I guess uh, so, I was begging. I think I said vote for Mr. Yeah, Glasses. Yeah, yeah, the... Vote for Mr. Glasses. I didn't want any of the shows to feel like the joke was the lack of budget. Part of the fun was, okay, well, what, what can we do? I mean, I think the fact that it was black and white was already helpful. A lot of the sets and stuff, we were just sort of building in, in my place or other people's places, but really just frame it as well as possible so that it was convincing. Working for zero is doable, or for a little <laughs> bit, or for lunch is yeah. doable. Then things kind of rise astronomically like, because it becomes kind of stupid to say, oh, I have $50, you know, for people who are real. <laughs> you know? yeah. I miss those days where it was just, just everybody kind of made me make things, you know. It, things that become kind of prohibitive 
as you advance, it seems. So was Mr. Glasses ever canceled? I think I might have bowed out. This is when Ellie was on the office you had a replacement for her she was in the the uh the sean episode i think which, which we had a replacement sean at that point too oh really? uh, i don't think i never <laughs> noticed that there's a different sean they were hard to put together those shows they were a real pain in the ass yeah that's actually a joke in one of your welcome to my study mr glasses bookends right, one of the right, jokes that is that high. sean is yeah. not there what did you think sean wait you're not sean no, Sean couldn't make You'd it. You'd call and email and email and and beg to show up, and they and they would, you know, it was obviously not as important to them as it was <laughs> for me. They'd be like, "Oh God, I have to show up to this thing again." You mentioned having an arts background. What what exactly is this arts background? I got a, an MFA in painting, but I was always like an art guy, thinking I would, would be a painter. I mean, it's impossible, but uh, that was the that was the dream. I was very used to the idea of doing something creative with no hope of success. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was comfortable with that idea, trying to find a, a job, a, a dumb job to, to kind of support your interests. Yeah, what, um, what were some of the dumb jobs you had? A uh, window display guy that kind of seems to go hand in hand with like set design which has always seemed mm -hmm. like something that you have a an eye for there was sort of a tableau element of shots that were framed at a 90 degree angle to the to the background and so you, you would that's what a window is right yeah you're, you're looking in. i hadn't known that the funnier die welcome to my studies had existed until like this weekend when i was stalking you online it's kind of striking looking at like the first episode and then the funnier die ones because it's like the same thing but it just like is way more polished we weren't allowed to use the yarn hanging that we had because it was like copyrighted it oh, was wow. something that you know it was weird i was just so unused to the industry it felt like an odd leap yeah. <laughs> you know i'm used to doing things my own way and i think that i get nervous about giving up um control yeah i know like, that you uh you like copy wrote the the or trademarked the character in the show or something i was so paranoid i'm like oh they're like we now we own this character and i'm like this is the thing that i made that i like like why do you own the character <laughs> yeah. you know? and i'm like it's he's called mitchell and my name's mitchell and, you know. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like a prince sort <laughs> so of situation like, what do you owe? so tonight you could make a, a welcome to my study if you wanted to i could yeah i could <laughs> and why not i mean people like that show i like or i gravitate maybe towards writing things where people are struggling with something um, that's internal that can't really be recognized from the mm -hmm. outside. Nothing lasts forever. Our bodies decay and our bones get brittle. Soon I will shed this mortal coil. But there will always be plants. <laughs> the top comment for one of the um, uh, plants in disco. No one liked that show either. <laughs> one of the top oh comments was, was, how do people get money to make these things? <laughs> no. Which is a kind of a good do? question when you like I break know. it down. I pitched it and they bought it. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> if you look at your website now, um, you've got kind of a whole section for working on ads. What has it been like making advertising? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's fun enough in that you're working with a group of people and you're trying to kind of come up with something interesting and engaging and because some of it you watch and you're like oh okay I, I can connect the dots and see how yeah it's funny i mean no one was saying oh i want a mitch mcgee guy to direct this. <laughs> yeah. you know? they're actually fun to do yeah. you're involved in <laughs> casting and you you know someone has to build an entire living room yeah well that's good to hear it's like looking at these ads it's like boy is this guy not having any fun anymore uh, no it's but no yeah I, I feel bad because i i uh when, when you asked me to do this interview i'm like oh i haven't really made anything in a long time you know like yeah. everything that i've done has been in the in writing i think that you know you, i write these things and you know you do a table read of something that you liked or you you know you write a feature and it doesn't get produced which is kind of sad because um you know you want to see what you have done get made what I need to do is write the one location feature. <laughs> Everything just ends up getting back to welcome to my study, doesn't it? Yeah. I went to your dad's website because at one point you tweeted, like, check out my dad's book. I noticed that his name is Mike. In right. Greener Grass, your character's name is Mike. I don't think that has to do with anything necessarily. Yeah. You know? And I was wondering if your 
one of your grandfather's names also started with an M because then that would be a delicious heritage. I'll, sh I'll, I'll share with you something very delicious. Okay. Uh, and my, my grandfather's name did not begin with a, with an M. But all of my siblings, I come from a family of four, uh -huh. and we are all M's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now it gets even worse. My mom did this because she had a pact with her siblings that because they came from a family of all P's, and there were <laughs> ten of them, that each of them would name their kid, start with the first letter of the first kid that was born and then name all their kids after that letter. And none of the other siblings did it. Except <laughs> That's like showing up to a costume party and no one else is wearing a costume. What, are there even that many P names? Yeah, I, uh, I'll give, should, should I give <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see, uh, let's put your cards on the table. Pam, Portia, Penelope, Paul, Peter, Philip, Peyton, Patricia, um, who am I missing? You were close. We needed uh, Perry and Priscilla. <laughs> I the, pre the pressure, the pressure. Well, it's been fun, Mitch. And if I had one wish, it'd be to spend more time with you. I have seen things, things I just choose not to talk about. that only seem to frighten and offend most anybody. Welcome 